welcome, welcome all to this, the third annual lecture of uh, the ITC in this glorious building, and particular thanks to Peter and the Mayor's office for allowing us to, uh, for as long as we can thank Peter in that capacity, and the Mayor's office for allowing us into this glorious space. I'm Simon Linnett, I'm a Vice Chairman at Rothschilds, and I'm also Chairman, proud to be Chairman of the Independent Transport Commission, and obviously we're delighted to see so many uh, distinguished and, uh, and important guests with us this evening for what we consider to be one of the highlights of the ITC's uh, year. The evening is being filmed, uh, but that shouldn't inhibit you from coming forward, I hope, with questions. Uh, we will edit out any of those that are... No, we won't. We're, we're a very open and honest organisation. Um, so what are we? For those people who are relatively new to the ITC, we're a research-based research think tank. We think we're uniquely in a position where we cover uh, uh, debate uh, and, 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 and research around the arena of transport and land use. Our mission is to improve policy-making through research into the strategic long-term policy issues, and we are especially well-placed to do that as a non-political charity operating independently of government. Although government is much of our audience, we operate independently of it. The ITC fulfills this mission through a busy programme of research, events, but we are a small organisation and without an endowment. So I would like to thank in particular our corporate sponsors, many of them represented here tonight, without whom uh, none of this work would take place. And I also and welcome in anticipation some of those who might be thinking of becoming uh, corporate sponsors. So as I mentioned, the ITC aims to bring together both transport and land use. And this is a particularly important theme uh, in terms of the policy agenda at the moment, as a result of the government's interest in giving more autonomy to our cities and our regions. And the ITC's interests in that general debate are marked tonight with the publication, it's on your chair, of the latest in our occasional paper series by one of the ITC's founder members, Alan. I can't see you, Alan, so maybe, oh, over there, uh, Alan Baxter. Uh, these think pieces are designed to be personal think pieces, and they offer new insights into fundamental questions. And Alan's paper, I think, explores the question uh, of how cities are affected by, by, uh, uh, by, by changes in behavioural patterns and does that exactly without a detailed mathematical analysis but just on his personal assumption over many years of the radical changes in our movement patterns that have taken place in the last five or six generations. I think as we stand here today we're now expecting further radical changes uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, affecting how we live and how we think about city regions. And he calls upon us to grasp the potential that Britain has with its fortunate geography and its inherited urban pattern and of infrastructure to create a bright future, a perfect segue into this evening's uh, event. We also connect uh, land use and transport through other areas of our work and it would be remiss not to mention our high-speed rail and cities research led by Professor John Worthington whose face is deliberately there we are uh, that has demonstrated I think clearly how high-speed rail impacts cities and the regions we've toured Europe to look at experience there of capturing the opportunity both from HSR high-speed rail infrastructure and the report from which uh, Sir David has kindly helped launch at the end of last year, John is now leading a team taking these insights into the UK cities and regions. So if you're from a regional perspective, you will see more of him and his team. And we're also canvassing opinion at the moment on the impacts of the government citizen devolution bill. Uh, that's being done by Mary, Mary Bonner, another ITC commissioner. And we expect to respond on some, with some transport-related observations uh, with another occasional paper in about a month or so's time. Now, today, to bring us back to today, we are exploring the bigger picture. Do cities shape transport more than transport infrastructure shapes our cities? An impossible and rather simplistic and naive question, as we all know. We know that many of our great cities have their or origin in transport or movement needs. Uh, looking out of the window in that direction, you can see the Thames. 
uh, obviously a, a river which was fundamental for the uh, growth of London's existence, uh, situated a, at a point where ships could dock and trade, and at a point also where the river could be crossed to transport another aspect of the transport interface. We've obviously experienced many transport revolutions uh, since London's founding, yet connectivity remains central to the city's prosperity, an issue we hope the government will reflect on as it seeks to respond to the forthcoming Airport Commission's report. Uh, we've done our own report, led by Stephen Hickey over there, uh, uh, and have made major contribution to that, and indeed there was a pu paper published earlier this week, uh, which got some uh, publicity uh, emphasising the importance of taking a decision in that regard. But on the other hand, it's clear from looking at the map of Britain's railways or motorways, and you can see a map of some of the railways just looking out of this window, uh, that the, the positions of our cities have greatly shaped our transport networks and will continue to do so. So better understanding of this whole issue is important. So, on to this evening proper. Now, the pattern for this evening actually bears witness to its own debate. Because had we already got high speed to it, may be, have been possible for Howard Bernstein, who has had a local crisis, to be with us. But notwithstanding that, we are delighted to uh, welcome Dave. Uh, Dave Newton, a perfect replacement in his stead. Dave is a transport strategic, the transport strategic director for Greater Manchester. He's a long career in initiatives and in the region uh, with strong transport connections. Uh, the 2002 Commonwealth Games, the redevelopment of the city centre after the 1996 bomb, to name just two. In particular, he's been playing a leading role in Greater Manchester HS2, Manchester's HS2 proposals and in the ongoing work on the transport for the north. And Dave will talk to us tonight about how cities shape transport infrastructure. I'm going to move straight on because I don't intend to get back up here. We're not going to be juggling around all the time. So introducing David, uh, who will follow Dave, we will then f hear from David Higgins. Uh, his long experience in transport knows, uh, needs no real introduction. Uh, he began his work with Len Lease as Chief Executive in, of English Partnerships, the government's national regeneration agency. And in 2006, he took up the position of the Chief Executive of the London Olympic Delivery Authority uh, for 2012. Uh, after that, he became Chief Executive of Network Rail in 2010, after he'd set the groundwork for that great event in the city. And in 2014, he moved from that and has been cha Executive Chairman of High Speed 2, uh, Britain's biggest rail project for over a century. Uh, he will look, obviously, at the other side, uh, at how the transport infrastructure has, 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 has shaped our cities. And finally, and this is very much a network rail, as we now discover event, uh, because Peter Hendy, is, 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 as you, I'm sure, all know, or you certainly do, as I'm about to tell you, has just been confirmed as the, uh, the chairman of, uh, uh, of, re of network rail, uh, will sum up, uh, after a <coughs> short question and answer session, with some remarks of his own uh, about these general issues. Peter has uh, been here for how long? Nine years, I think? Nine and a half years. Nine and a half years as, uh, as the Commissioner for Transport for London. So, that's it. That's me done. I'm going to be back to try and get you to ask some questions. But in the meantime, Dave, then David, and then we'll have some questions, and then Peter. <laughs>